Hello everybody. The eruption in the Fagradarsfjall system in Iceland continues and has now been erupting for a week. The eruption site has finally been opened again after being closed for five days, mostly due to wildfires in the area caused by the lava. But our firefighters managed to gain control of them today after hard work. So now people can go visit the eruption site safely on a rather nice path, which on this image is marked in blue. For more information on how to visit the eruption site, you can go to savetravel.is. I'll leave a link in the description. Before going into the most recent data, I'm going to do a quick recap of the eruption this past week. On July 10th, it started and did so with a bang. The lava output on the first day was estimated to be at around 40 cubic meters per second, which is much more than the previous two eruptions. Then, on the second day, lava output decreased by 50% to around 20 cubic meters per second, which was still high and the scenes on the eruption site were breathtaking. On the third day, the lava output decreased yet again by 50%, to around 10 cubic meters per second, and around that time the wildfire started to be a problem. So the following day the site closed, and the firefighters came in. Since July 13th, the lava output has stayed the same, at 10 cubic meters per second with the lava field continuing to expand at a steady rate. Now, let's check out the most recent data. Our experts haven't been able to get much data in the past two days due to the wildfires, but they managed to do some measurements. The crater was measured on the 15th and stood at 22 meters, which means it has grown 2 meters per day, so we can estimate that it's around 26 meters currently. Also, by looking at the livestream cams, we can see how a lava channel has formed, where the lava river flows through. And closest to the crater, there's even a ceiling covering the channel, which is really cool. This channel seems to clog every now and then, which then results in lava flowing on top of the ceiling and behind the crater, creating spectacular scenes. Our experts were able to measure the area of the lava field on the 16th, and on that day it covered 0 0.76 square kilometers. No update on the volume was posted, but since the eruption has been stable since the last measurements on the 13th, we can estimate it. The estimation gives us 7.82 million cubic meters, but as the lava field isn't 100% lava, but also cracks and air pockets, it's probably more accurate to take 25-35% to of this number, which means that 5.5 million cubic meters of lava has been erupted in the first week. This is how the lava field looks from a bird's eye view. Our experts have created an algorithm that has proved to predict the progress of the lava pretty accurately. And when they ran it on July 17th, it says that the lava will start flowing out of Meradalir on July 22nd. This means that if the eruption lasts long, it could reach a road a few kilometers down south, but it would have to go on for quite some time to pull that off. Eruptions of such length and size don't seem to be as common in the Faradarsfjall system like they are in the other systems on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Although Faradarsfjall did produce one of the largest lava fields on the peninsula in the last 15,000 years, Þráinsskjöldur, which is a monstrous 135 square kilometer and 5 cubic kilometer lava field, formed in an eruption around 14,000 years ago. That eruption lasted for years or even decades, but it was made possible by the fact that the ice age had just ended. This eruption won't last that long for sure. But if this eruption continues at this rate, without suddenly stopping, it would take 3.3 months to deplete the estimated volume of the intrusion, which was 88 million cubic meters. But that's really speculative, as it most likely won't be able to run through all this fuel before the magma conduit clogs or something else happens. So as always, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed. I also hope to see most of you in the next video. And thanks for watching.